Hi everybody, my name is John Bevier, this is Chris Koster. We're from Sound Organization, we represent Riga products in Canada and the United States. What we are debuting today at Listen Up in Boulder, Colorado during their Analog Week events is the new Riga Naya. This is the best turntable we have ever produced as a production line product. It mates beautifully with the Aura Phono Stage, also made exactly for this turntable, and even the cartridge we manufacture over in the UK. Uh, that is called the Aphelion 2. This combination represents the very finest that Riga knows how to make. Uh, Chris is lucky enough to own one. He got them very early on in the production. So rather than me missing maybe a cue or two, I'll let him take over here and describe the product. And maybe we'll remind ourselves during this process. So the Naya I've had for about a month and I've had a planar 10 for a couple of years and, and love it. And I was trying to imagine what was possible to be better than a planar 10 and, and how would that sound? And you know, when you think about what a turntable does, uh, as Riga says, it's a measuring device that measures some of the small of, smallest movements um, one could imagine and, or even measure. So the point of the Naya is to have a precise ability to measure these tiny microscopic movements of, of uh, especially of harmonics and music where the movements are almost indescribably small and up to a, a, as small as one micron a micron level and maybe even less for all yeah. we know probably it is so yeah using the same cartridge in both turntables i found this this turntable to bring out and extract music an amount of music that is just remarkable and and in the same league as 50 to 100 thousand dollar turntables that i've heard which can be very good too um, one of the things I noticed last night is as a song was fading out, it was one of those slow fading out songs, the image, the tunefulness, the sense of all the notes of all the different instruments, whether they were loud or, or soft, did not fade with the fade. In other words, you could hear them just as clearly as they faded out as when they were loud at their full volume. And I don't think I've heard that from a plain R10 or any other turntable like it. And that was really a an extraordinary uh, moment yeah. for me is, is, is just hearing because as it fades out, the movements get smaller and smaller and they just hold together in a way that's completely new. Yeah. And that means that the music itself, when it's playing, is very rich because harmonics are what, why music is not sine waves. It's, it's a very complex waveform and, and uh, the whole point of the rigidity and the, and the uh, energy control and the lack of vibration of the wrong kinds is, is so special on here. So uh, maybe we should just talk about a few features, don't you think, uh, you know? Sure. Yeah, let's yeah, do that. Yeah. Okay, well, um, first of all, the bearing is a ceramic bearing now. It's quieter, probably lasts 10 times longer from what little I know. Um, that's a huge step for them. That was a, a bearing that was in a much more expensive Riga turntable called the Nyad. And uh, so this is a, a real step up for for all of us to have. Um, the platter is heavier. It has three belts now instead of two, so speed control is even more stable. The, uh, the tone arm has a much more precise bearing. The structure of the turntable, having carbon fiber on either side, means that the relationship of the stylus and the record is much more stable now uh, with even less movement at those micron level movements, which are the things that make music special. And uh, I'm just, uh, I'm over the moon. So what Tremendous. You, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, you have any th thoughts on, on its, from what well, you've the, learned? The, the titanium uh, has been reduced in its thickness and polished to be even lower in mass. Uh, so we get that point where if you think of my arm as a, as a my shoulder is the, the cartridge, my arm is a cantilever, and my finger is the diamond. As the grooves are asking my, my hand to go back and forth, that energy goes straight up the cantilever into the cartridge, and it's not decreased in its efficiency to make those tiny little micron uh, uh, wide moves 
by having a lot of weight. So being extremely rigid and very low mass is everything about that turn that uh, tone arm. Yes. I think, you know, it's really good to point out that Riga has made a very strong case for the low mass concept as opposed to what most expensive turntables are uh, trying to do these days, which are get bigger and bigger and massive and, you know, tall and, and hundreds of pounds. And that you feel like you're getting something, you're getting a lot of metal and maybe some other, you know, plastic and other things. But the reality is all that mass absorbs vibrations from both the hi-fi and from the world when a truck goes by or a car goes by mm -hmm. or the wind blows and pushes the house around in small but you know very measurable ways this turntable does not store that energy does not absorb and store that energy it, it rejects it and says no that's not part of the turntable playing experience that's from outside of the world and so Riga has made a really strong case for low mass which I'm, I'm yeah I'm quite sure is the right the right. So this part of the turntable would be called the plinth, uh, and that is what's called an exoskeleton, uh, and it's got it's cut out, so it's not there to be just minimalist by look or by design. It's that way to not offer as large a target for the energy waves that are coming through the room that are being pulsed out, uh, energized by the loudspeaker movement. So if energy strikes this it wicks away and drains away very quickly so that that interface of measuring physical and turning it into electrical uh, isn't being added to by motion of the room or by vibration of the plinth. So that would be an additive uh, uh, distortion and yet it's able to decode everything that's in the physical and turn it into electrical just as it's supposed to be. It's a little technical, but I suspect you get what I'm saying. <laughs> And the you know beautifully machined uh, center hub that's attached to the bearing is is brand new and and much much more advanced and and uh, motor mount everything is just taken to uh, a level similar to the the fifty thousand almost fifty thousand dollar turntable yeah. at a uh, less than a third the price so it, it, we really we really got something special here that uh, many many people can and can be, become an owner of. And so. e even though this is, in the real world, only $17,000, $16,995, when there's lots of turntables out there for over $100,000 that don't sound as good, uh, they can only make four of these a day in the UK for the world. There's that much handwork and technology involved. Their goal is five to six a day. But right now we are getting so much interest in this and so many people have put in orders already that if you want one, don't wait because it's just going to get more and more difficult to get a hold of one of these. Thank you.